In the last episode, I said that Bomberman 64 and The Second Attack were the first Bomberman games that I ever played. But that's not technically true. Before I played either of those, I played Bomberman Hero. I only played it for like 10 to 15 minutes a single time, but I did technically play it first. It was obviously when I was a little kid. Me and some of my friends went to the YMCA to go for a swim, and afterwards we decided to play some video games in the game room that they had set up there. It was basically just a small room with a foosball and pool table and a couple of N64s hooked up to TVs. It was actually there that I played Banjo-Kazooie for the first time, one of my favorite games. And another game I tried out while I was there was Bomberman Hero. I really liked it, but the next time I came and I tried to play it, it had been replaced. It wasn't there anymore. I had no idea what the name of it was, and when I asked my parents to get it for me, they ended up getting me both Bomberman 64 games by accident. It wasn't until a few years later that I saw Bomberman Hero sitting in a used game shop. So I mean, it may have taken a while, but at least I did eventually get to play it again. Well let's stop wasting time and get to it. Bomberman Hero. The story begins, and is in absolutely no way ripping off a beloved sci-fi classic. So here's the plot setup. Princess Leia, or sorry, I mean Princess Million, is trying to get away from the evil empire, I mean the Garadin Empire. They're after a computer disc that she has, and right before she's captured, she gives it to R2-D2, I mean, I mean Piebot, obviously. Piebot escapes an escape pod, and when it crashes on Tatooine, sorry, Planet Bomber, I find him. He gives me the disc, and we set out on our quest to save the princess and stop the evil empire. So you see, there are absolutely no similarities to the Star Wars. <laughs> You're being silly. <laughs> so right off the bat, you can see that this is pretty different than pretty much any other Bomberman game. You still place bombs, kick bombs, and throw bombs, but now you can jump. I mean, look at him go. Bomberman's finally learned how to put some force into his legs and use them to push his feet downward into the ground, sending his body temporarily flying upwards into the air, only to then fall back down towards the earth a moment later. Jumping! It's a straight 3D platformer. There's a couple of puzzles here and there, but this is first and foremost a platformer. This is really kind of strange because Bomberman has never really been a platformer before or sense. Sort of seems like an odd choice, but hey, it works. The control is very responsive, and the bombs seem to home in on enemies just a little bit, making hitting enemies a lot easier than it would have been otherwise. You can no longer pump up bombs to make them bigger, but instead you can charge up your bomb throw and throw up to four bombs at once. It can be useful to defeat some enemies, I guess, but honestly, I don't use it. There's literally only a single spot in the entire game where you need to use it. And after that level, I'm honestly not sure if I ever used it a single time ever again. So the control is responsive and hit detection is fine, but Bomberman has very slippery movement and also some really floaty feeling jumping. Once you get used to it, it's not so bad, but when you first start playing, you're gonna feel like you're on the moon. There are also some spots where you need to jump to a platform, and it can be kind of hard to tell if you're properly lined up with it. You can rotate the camera slightly, which helps, but it can still be a little annoying here or there. But hey, why spend time polishing this gameplay when you can just make new and different gameplay? They decided to give this gameplay some variety in the form of Bomberman's Power Gear. While most of the levels are in this regular 3D platformer format, every few levels are special. You get to play with one of four power-ups. The Bomber Marine, which are underwater levels. Bomber Copter, which are flying levels where you drop bombs down on enemies. Bomber Jet, where you fly and shoot rockets. And Bomber Slider, which is basically a snowboard. These levels are really not as fun as the regular ones. Some of them are okay, but others are just kind of bland. I also don't really see the point in the Bomber Jet, seeing as how it's pretty much just the exact same thing as the Bomber Marine, except you're flying in the air instead of underwater. Oh, and it can't go in reverse. So it's basically just worse and more difficult water levels taking place in the air. 
Why not get rid of the bomber jet and just have underwater levels in this style, and then use the bomber copter more often? I mean, there are only three levels in the game that use it. And on that note, there's actually only two levels that use the bomber slider. Two! This game has like 70 levels, and only two of them are snowboarding ones. I guess we should be counting our blessings though, since they're really not very fun. They're awful. They're absolutely terrible. It's hard to control, and it just feels really clunky. Even if you do get a hang of the controls, it's still not really fun. Snowboarding should be fast. This isn't fast. It's slow as hell. Thank God there's only two of these. It kind of begs the question, though, of why they even bothered making these different gameplay modes at all if they were just going to A, be so few in number, and B, suck. Getting back to the regular levels, what else is there to say? The goal of each level is to make it to the end. Unlike in the second attack, you don't have different types of bombs to choose from. Although there are different types of temporary bomb power-ups that you can pick up. But while the other game had all of those different cool sounding elemental bombs, this game only has your regular bombs and then two other ones. One of them is ice, which sounds fine. And the other one is salt. Salt bombs. I'm not making this up. You can get bombs of salt. And no, they can't break anything because they're salt. All they're used for is killing these slug enemies. That's it. Salt. And they also only appear in two levels. The ice bombs are more or less the same, except that they freeze enemies. Still can't break anything, though. Oh, and also, a little cherry on the cake here, the ice bombs only appear in a single level. Kind of a missed opportunity, if you ask me. And then to round out this trio of missed opportunities, is Louie. Louie is a kangaroo-type alien creature that's appeared in various older Bomberman games, but this was his first 3D appearance. Basically, he's Yoshi. You ride him around and you can jump on enemies. You can also wall jump and he jumps really high on his own. But there are only a few levels in the entire game that use him. And by a few, I mean two. I mean, come on, really? This could have been a reoccurring gameplay element. Riding him is really fun. I wish there were more levels like this. Why develop a power-up for your game? You know, design it, put it in the game, program it, if you're only going to use it once or twice in the 70 levels that you have. Well, moving on from that, let's talk about graphics. The graphics are pretty much on par with the second attack. I guess, technically, the second attack looks a bit better, but seeing as how the worlds in that game were made up of several isolated and connected screens, and this game uses larger open 3D levels to explore, it, it makes sense why this one would look slightly worse. But it doesn't look distractingly ugly or anything, it's mostly just the art direction, honestly. There's oftentimes some very barren scenery, larger open areas with nothing really in them to decorate them. The models and animations are honestly a bit better in some places than the second attack. Bomberman especially, for some reason I, I feel compelled to mention that his animations for running and jumping, landing, they're all very smooth and they look really nice. Kinda works well with the floaty jumping to be honest, it just makes it look a bit better. So overall, the graphics are good. The music on the other hand, eh, yeah, the best word to describe it, eh. There's actually only really one great song in the whole game. It's called Redial. It's a pretty catchy song, it's good as background music, and it's actually the music that's playing right now. It's the best song in the game, but other than that one, I honestly don't even really remember. I mean, none of it is distractingly annoying or horrible music. It's just really mediocre. A lot of the songs just sound the same. Sometimes the music just kind of sounds like a short loop of some futuristic sound effects, which kind of just comes off as lazy. And then every once in a while, you get to a level that has no music at all. Yep, a new level of lazy. Well, okay, no, sorry, that, that's not true. It's more like middle-of-the-road level of lazy. I mean, you can't really reach a new level of lazy after playing big rigs. It just, it can't really be done. But, 
For the sake of talking about games other than big rigs, I'm just going to say that this is a new level of lazy. Here is a big annoyance. You have a health bar in this game, and you start off with four hit points. You can upgrade it to a maximum of eight by collecting a bunch of these crystals. 200 crystals per upgrade, that's four upgrades times two. Yeah, 800, 800 crystals. And this isn't like Mario, there aren't a hundred crystals in every level. So yeah, you have upgradable health just like in the last game. But unlike then, in this one, if you run out of lives or you just decide to stop playing for a bit, it reverts back down to four. Basically, if you power your console off and then power it back on later to play, you're back to four hit points. It really sucks. Especially because this game is fairly long. You're not going to want to play it all in a single setting. Especially me, because apparently when it comes to Bomberman games on the Nintendo 64, I really like to go all out. Every level has a target point score to reach in order to get the perfect ranking of 5. Getting rank 5 in all of the levels on a planet will get you a gold emblem. Collecting the target score usually means having to collect every item in the level and killing every enemy. Sometimes it's pretty easy and kind of fun, and sometimes it's annoying, since you don't get to see the target score until the end, so you might finish a level only to realize that you missed some hidden gem hidden away out of sight. Why not tell me how many points I need to get at the beginning of a level, or maybe even before the level starts? It's kind of annoying. Getting the target score is also pretty boring and annoying in the Power Gear levels. Needing to constantly slow down so I'm sure that I blow everything up and collect all the shiny things. And boss battles? Jeez. The bosses are actually pretty great on their own. They're a lot of fun. But getting the target score requires beating them within a strict time limit. This boss especially took me a while before I was good enough to do it. It's annoying, but not impossible. The hardest one was probably the final boss, though. Speaking of which... After traveling across the galaxy and constantly failing to save the princess, you actually do save the princess. And then you head off to Garadin Star to face off against your greatest challenge yet, a series of boss battles. The underwater one sucks, big surprise. The villains use the computer disks that they've acquired to resurrect the brain of an evil scientist known as Lord Bagular who's apparently a reoccurring villain in the franchise. And he laughs a lot. <laughs> and I mean a lot. <laughs> he laughs a lot. <laughs> and after kicking his butt, or kicking his computer screen, uh, uh, blowing up his arms, or, uh, I mean, just, just killing him, let's just keep it simple and vague, I have won! I blow up the Death Star, I, sorry, Garadin Star, I get a smooch from the princess, and my beloved public watch on in jealousy. Great animations there, for the crowd, for the, for the jumping. Yeah, they look, they look really top-notch. But of course, we're not done. After the credits, a cutscene will trigger, only if you achieve gold ranking on every level, and have collected all 24 of the hidden attic bombs. They are these giant bomb items that are hidden in a bunch of the levels. Evil Bomber, who is apparently also a reoccurring villain in the franchise, shows up randomly. I play through two more levels, pretty difficult, but good ones, and then I fight him. The epic final battle, one on one. Man versus man, bomber versus bomber, good versus evil, cats versus dogs, aliens versus predator, Freddy versus Jason, and Batman versus Superman. God, that movie sucked, who's with me? Evil Bomber is sadly pretty easy to defeat. It's kind of anticlimactic. And after that, another cutscene plays. And now I have completed this game. But we are still technically not done yet. Even after beating these levels and completing the story completely, collecting everything, there's actually still a few more things to do. Unlockables in the options menu. 
I don't think I need to waste much time on this. In fact, I don't really even need to talk about it at all, so I'll just make this quick. You unlock three things. One of them is another snowboarding level, which is actually just one of the previous two, but now you race a snowman. The second is a group of three levels using the golden armor. It's pretty much just two recycled levels from earlier, and a third original level, which is really difficult and annoying. And lastly is Million's Treasure Hunt, which is basically a scavenger hunt for treasure. Okay. Now I have completed the game. Not really sure why. I'm never really this comprehensive with the other games I review. Curse you, Bomberman. But anyway, final consensus? It's good. The game is fun, that's the most important thing. But on top of that, we have graphics that were good for the time, the control is responsive, and the floatiness of Bomberman's jumps are actually kind of an asset. It makes it easier to throw bombs while you're jumping, to hit enemies or targets that are further away. And the gameplay does have some variety with the different power gears and riding around on Louie. I just wish that these things were used a bit more and were a bit more polished. The boss battles are all fun, and with the exception of some repeated boss battles, it doesn't really feel like you're just fighting the same boss over and over, a problem that the second attack did sort of have. This game is far from perfect though. For one thing, and this is admittedly a pretty big thing, there is no multiplayer mode. That's right. A Bomberman game with no multiplayer. Kind of weird, isn't it? Bomberman games are usually all about the multiplayer, and this game doesn't even have the option. And that definitely takes away from a bit of the value from this game. Also, Bomberman's slippery movement did get me killed quite a few times, and it can be pretty annoying. Scouring through a level for every item only to finish and realize that you're 500 points short is also pretty annoying and losing your health when you stop playing is infuriating. In fact, after defeating the final boss for the first time, I didn't quite get the right score. I missed it, so I didn't get a ranking of 5. But because it's the final battle, it went straight to the credits and then restarted my game. So, when all I wanted to do was just try beating him again, my health was sadly back down to 4 points. God damn it. This boss is actually pretty hard, so good luck beating him and getting the time limit with only four hit points. So I ended up just grinding for an hour, got my health back just high enough so that I could try again. But aside from those things, it is a solid game. And it's actually pretty long. And unlike the last two Bomberman 64 games, this one is actually available on the Wii's Virtual Console. So it's not impossible to get your hands on so I'd actually recommend it. Now I suppose it's finally time for me to get on with talking about some other games. You know, games that aren't part of the Bomberman series. Ow, oh, what the hell? What was that? Oh god. No. No, I don't want to play this. I don't want to play this game. Where, where did this even come from? Seriously, where did this game even fall from? It's just, no, hey, do not fade to, to be continued. No, I'm not... I'm not playing this. Stop it. Stop it right now. Stop. Ah, uh, God damn it.